بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الدرس الخامس lesson number five من الشعر العربي بلادي so here now we're gonna start getting to look at some uh, adab some literature from the Arab world so the main form of literature in Arabic is a shi'ar poetry so من الشعر العربي from Arabic poetry and they're going to give us a poem called Biladi, my country, or my land. Look, first, they introduce the poet to us, a sha'ar, right? The ism fa'il. <coughs> sha'ar is ism fa'il from sha'ar. Sha'ar yash'uru means to feel something. So the sha'ar, the poet, is the one who uh, is able to you know, feel uh, these emotions and these ideas and then to express those in words. So they say, هَذِهِ ثَلَاثُ مَقْطُوعَاتٍ مِنْ قَصِيدَةٍ بِعُنْوَانِ بِلَادِ لِلشَّاعِرِ إِلِيَا أَبُو مَاضِي So these are three مَقْطُوعَات uh, basically uh, excerpts Something maqtu'a is uh, like you took a piece of literature and you just took one part and excerpt from that. So here are three excerpts from a qasida, a poem. A qasida is generally understood to be any poem made up of more than seven abyat. Right? The poems in Arabic, each line is called a bait, and the plural is abyat. So if it's seven or more abyat, then it would be considered a qasida. Bi unwan with the title, biladi. The sha'iri to the poet, Ilya Abu Mahdi. So, Ulida Ilya Abu Mahdi fi Lubnana Hawale Am Alf wa Thamani Mi'a wa Wahid wa Tis'ain. Ulida, he was born, right? Notice this is a fi'ad Mahdi. It is majhul, right? Walada, to give birth. Walida, to be born. Ilya was born in Lebanon, in Lebanon, Hawale, around approximately the year 1891 Miladi. Right? So this little meme here, I think we learned in a previous lesson, uh, lets us know that this is according to the Gregorian calendar. Also important to remember when you're reading Dates in Arabic, in modern standard Arabic, the way they do it is first they start here, so they say Alf, and then go to the next number, uh, and 800, then they'll skip over here to the last number, and then come back here to Tis'in. But if you wanted to, just start from the right and go all the way to the left. Uh, that would be fine too because that is how they used to do it in classical Arabic and that's the way if you look at old Arabic texts when they write the year out and spell it out in words instead of using the numbers <coughs> that's how they'll write it they'll start here at the right and go all the way to the left so it'll be fi am wahid wa tis'in wa thamani mi'a wa alf if you were to do it that way but the common way now is to start here say uh, alf with the mani mia wa wahid wa tis'in 1891 rahala ila masr he traveled rahala yarhalu to go on a rahla a trip rahala ila masr he traveled to egypt hawali am around the year 1000 wa tis'imia wa ithnain 1902 and he busied himself to keep oneself busy or to be busy with something Sajair is the plural of Sijara uh, cigarette, or a, a, a sajair, cigarettes, what dukhan, literally a smoke, but here meaning tobacco. 
وفي أوقات فراغه in his free time right أوقات uh, it's the plural of وقت a period of time فراغ is for something for emptiness right so في أوقات فراغه in his time of being free اشتغل بالقراءة والدرس وندم الشعر in his free time he busied himself with reading and studying and putting together poetry هاجر إلى أمريكا عام ألف وتسعمية وأحد عشر. He traveled or made he migrated to America in the year nineteen eleven. واتخذها وطنا ثانيا أو مهجرا. He took it. It تخذها as a وطن as a homeland ثانيا a second homeland or what is known as a mahjar, a place that somebody makes hijra to. وَأَقَامَ فِي New York And he settled in New York. أَقَامَ يُقِيمُ فَهُوَ مُقِيم Here, meaning to settle in a certain place. وَلِذَلِكَ فَهُوَ مِنْ شُعَرَاءِ الْمَهْجَرِ Because of that, لِذَلِكَ He is from شُعَرَاء, right, the plural of شَاعِر. The poets of of a, a land they migrated to, right? And here meaning the poets who left Arab lands and went somewhere else. A, al-shu'ara al-Arab al-ladina hajaru ila Amerika. A, meaning al-shu'ara those of the Arabs, shu'ara al-Arab al-ladina, the ones who, right? This is the ism mausul, and then so here hajaru ila Amerika. Is going to be uh, the sila of the mausul, as we learned in the last lesson. In our damir, we have to have a aid, a rabbit that goes back to the same meaning of al ladina. It's the wow in hajaru. Hajaru, those from the Arabs that traveled or migrated to America, wa mu'avamuhum, and most of them, min Lubnan, or from Lebanon. وَقَضَوْ حَيَاتَهُمْ And they spent their lives فيها. So, قَضَوْ is one of those uh, weak verbs. It's a fi'r ناقص because it normally ends in the alif قَضَى So what did we do when we make it in plural? We added a waw at the end and we just got rid of that alif but we kept the fitha. So qada became qada. They spent, right? Fa'alu. Qada. They spent hayatahum, their lives fiha. Wa katabu, and they wrote. Wa allafu. Allafa yu'allifu is similar to the meaning of kataba, yaktubu, but more in the meaning of to author. Wa allafu, they authored hunak there, bilugat al arabiya in the Arabic language. وَنَشَرُوا مِنْهَا شِعْرَهُمْ And they published their poetry from America. From America. وَنَشَرُوا مِنْهَا شِعْرَهُمْ الْعَرَبِي They published their Arabic poetry from America. وَمِنْ شُعَرَاءِ الْمَهْجَرِ الَّذِينَ يَعْرِفُهُمَ الْعَالَمُ أَجْمَعُ الْآنِ جُبْرَانُ خَلِيلُ جُبْرَانِ And from those poets... Who, of the diaspora, I guess you could say, those poets who left the Arab world, الَّذِينَ those whom يَعْرِفُهُمْ Here, whom is our damir, that is our aid that refers back to our ism mausul, يَعْرِفُهُمْ knows them, الْعَالَمُ The whole world knows them. One of those famous poets is Jibran Khalil Jibran. Who has a very famous poem called "A Nabi or the Prophet"? قبل أن يبلغ العشرين من العمر أصدر إلي أبو ماضي ديوانه الأول وأهداه إلى الأمة المصرية. قبل أن يبلغ before having reached, right? This is an example of a half. Mustariya 
and then the fi'al after it, yablugh, to reach. So to two of them together forms what's called a mustar mu'awwal, what is interpreted as being the meaning of the mustar. So balagha yablugh, the mustar from that is bulugh, to reach a certain place. So qabla bulughihi ala ashreen, before his reaching of 20 min al umar 20 years from his life would have the same meaning here because an yablugha for him to reach a certain level is the same as saying bulughihi bulughihi his reaching so this harf an makes the fi'al after it the two of them together give the meaning of the mustar from that fi'al qabl an yablugh al 20 min al umar Asdara, he basically published Asdara Iliya Abu Madi Diwanahu, his collection of poetry, right? When somebody has all their poetry collected in one place, it's called a Diwan. The plural is Dawaween. Al Awwal, his first collection of poetry, Wa Ahdahu, and he gifted it from Ahda Yuhdi Il Al Ummat Al Misriya to the Egyptian nation. Now on Shi'aruhu, his poetry. Istashara iliya abu madi bit tafa'uli wa hubbi al hayati wal imani bi jamaliha. Istahara yashtahiru means to become well known or to become famous. So iliya abu madi, istahara, he became famous bit tafa'uli for optimism. Tafa'ul is the mustar from tafa'ala yatafa'alu, to be optimistic. Wa hubbi al-hayat, and love of life. Wal imani bi jamaliha, and believing in the beauty of it, meaning the beauty of life, right? This ha is the feminine dhamir, referring back to hayat. Wa da'an nasa ila al-amal. And he called the people ila al-amal. To hope. Al Amal is hope. Kama Haurab Tafrikata Bain al Tabakati wa Bain al Ajnas. Kama like Haraba he waged war from Haraba Yuharibu Muharabatan Bab Qatala Yuqatilu Muqatalatan means to wage war, right? From Harb at Tafrika. Splitting apart between the tabaqat, between the classes, right? A tabaqat is the gem of tabaqa, a certain class of people, or between al ajnas, the different types, right? Gents, the gents of something, is its certain type or species. The plural is ajnas. So here I'm not sure. It probably means different races would be the idea. Or between al ajnas, wada'a ila al musawati. بين الغني والفقير من عباد الله. and he called إلى المساواة equality المساواة بين between الغني والفقير the rich and the poor من عباد الله from the slaves of Allah. إليا أبو ماضي له قصائد مشهورة يحفظها الناس في العالم العربي. Iliya Abu Madi, he has lahu qasaid, right? The gem of qasida. He has qasaid, many poems that are mashhura. Qasaidu mashhuratun, famous poems, right? Mashhura here is in the singular feminine because it's a sifa of qasaid, which is a non human plural. And qasaid is memnu' min sarf so it just takes a dhamma, it won't take ten ween, because it's on that pla- the pattern uh, of jam muntah al like masajid, qasaid. So these famous, he has these famous poems that the people memorize in the Arab world. Minha qasidatu al-teen wa falsafatu al-hayat wa qasidatu biladi so these are the names of some of his favorite famous poems and 
Qasida to Biladi, the poem Biladi, which is the Mawdu' the topic of Hadha Dars of this lesson. Al Qasida. Fil Qasaidi Adatan Kalimatun Saba. In poems, Adatan often, most times, are Kalimatun Saba, difficult words. ولكن بعد شرح هذه الكلمات تستطيع أن تستمتع بالقصيدة. ولكن but after بعد شرح هذه الكلمات explanation شرح of these words تستطيع you are able أن تستمتع to really enjoy yourself. استمتع يستمتع بالقصيدة with this poem. أيضا also في القصائد أحيانا sometimes in poems Jumalun Saba, difficult sentences. Walakin a shi'ar yastahiku minka dirasatan a dirasata hadi hil juman. But the poetry, Walakin a shi'ar yastahiku minka dirasata hadi hil juman, it deserves from you, yastahiku, from istahaka, istahaka, yastahiku, meaning to deserve something. It deserves from you, dirasata. Studying of هذه الجمل of these sentences. تتحدث قصيدة بلادي عن فكرة إنسانية هي حب الإنسان لوطنه الأول. تتحدث قصيدة بلادي the poem بلادي تتحدث it talks about right and here conjugated for هي because قصيدة is feminine, so تتحدث عن about فكرة إنسانية a, you know, human uh, understanding here, which is حب الإنسان, the love of a person لوطنه, for his homeland الأول his first homeland, right? الأول is a صفة describing وطن وشوقه الدائم إليه and his constant desire for it, right? Shawqihi, his desire, ad daim constant. وطيور الوطني أحب إلى الإنسان من طيور البلاد الأخرى. طيور, right? The gem of طير, the birds. طيور الوطن of the homeland. أحب, or more beloved, right? اسم تفضيل. أحب إلي. أحب إلى. They're more beloved to al-insan, the person, the human being, min tuyur al-bilad al-ukhra, more beloved to him than the birds al-tuyur of al-bilad al-ukhra of other lands. So here we learn before, ukhra is the mu'annath, the feminine of akhar. So here we're using the singular feminine, ukhra, because it's a sifa describing bilad, a non-human plural. وظهور الوطن أجمل ظهور الدنيا وماء الوطن أعظم من أي ماء آخر. ظهور the plural of زهرة uh, flower so the flowers of the homeland أجمل ظهور الدنيا the most beautiful أجمل of this is a مضاف and a مضاف إليه most beautiful of the flowers of the دنيا of the world وماء الوطن and the water of the homeland Aadabu is more sweet from adab. Adab means to be sweet, right? Ma'un adbun, sweet water, fresh water. So aadabu, more sweet, min ayi ma'in akhar, than any ma water akhar, any other water. Wal husnu wal jamalu fil watani, yafuq al husna wal jamalu fil awtan al ukhra. And the husn. Uh, husn is like niceness and beauty, and al jamal is beauty as well, kind of similar meanings. Fil watani, in the homeland, yafuku, from faqa, yafuku, to go above, to be even more than al husn, the beauty, wal jamal, fil awtan, the gem of watan, on the pattern af'al, very common pattern for jumur, for plurals, al ukhra. There's more. The beauty in the homeland, yafuku, it goes above and beyond the beauty in any other lands. And here, this probably would be better to be yafuqani, right? Because it's referring to 
Al-Husnu wal Jamal. So it should be Muthanna. Instead of Yafuku, Yafuqani. Al-Husnu wal Jamalu fil Watani, Yafuqani, Al-Husna wal Jamala fil Autani al Ukhra. So now the poem itself, they tell you Udrus uh, Wahfad. Study it and memorize it. And this is important. Poetry is really, really important for the person that wants to learn Arabic well. Uh, I believe it was Omar ibn al-Khattab who you know, told people to have their children memorize poetry and said, إِنَّمَا الْكَلَامُ مِنَ الْكَلَامُ you know, Good speech only comes from good speech. Meaning the way that you get your tongue used to being able to speak in an eloquent, eloquent way is by memorizing eloquent speech. And this, you know, these modern poems... Uh, you know, they're not the best poems ever to be written in Arabic, but they're a lot easier for the beginning student to study and memorize. So it'd be good to, uh, you know, memorize some of the poetry that they'll start introducing in this book. And especially in volume three, they'll give you to some of the earlier poetry in uh, Islamic history. I think there's some poetry from the Abbasid uh times and then maybe even there might be a little something from jahili poetry so that stuff you definitely have to memorize and give importance to you and that will really open doors for you inshallah in the arabic language so he says innani maratu ala riyad al haliya wa sami'tu anqam al tuyur al shadiya tatribt walakin lam يحب فؤادي كطيور أرضي أو زهور بلادي وشربت ماء النيل شيخ الأنهر فكأنني قد ذقت ماء الكوثر نهر تبارك من قديم الأعصر عذب ولكن لا كماء بلادي ورسمت يوما صورة في خاطري لحسني إن الحسن رب الشاعر وذهبت أنشدها فأعيا خاطري حتى نظرت إلى بنات بلادي So now معاني الكلمات They're going to tell you the meaning of some of the more difficult words or Maybe unusual words are in the poem. So, al riyad are al hadaiq gardens, right? Riyad is the gem of Rauda. Rauda, a garden. So, Rauda can be on the plural pattern, Raudat, or al riyad al haliya mutazayinatun, al mutazayinatu bil zuhuri. والأشجار. right? Hali means for it to be beautified with flowers and trees. Zuhuri wal ashjar. Angam is the plural of nagum. Uh, it's the the singing or the melodies, right? Rina singing. Ashadia meaning alati to ghani, those which sing, right? So ashadia. Is an adjective in the poem describing a tuyur, meaning those that sing. Taribtu, right from tariba yatrabu, means surirtu, to become happy, to be pleased with something. Taribtu, I became pleased. Fuadia, here is just fuadi, my fuad, which means qalb, right? Qalbi, my heart, fuadi, my heart. And this ha here that's at the end, fuadiya, is not actually part of the word, it's just there for the sound, for stopping at the end of the line of the poetry to give it that, uh, to match with the other lines and to give it that strong fuadiya at the end. Dhuktu, from dhaqa, yadhuku, to taste something. Right? Dhuktu, here they say, sharibtu, I drank, dhuktu, I tasted. Al kawthar, right, is nahrun fil jannah. A river in paradise. Tabaraka. Barakahullah. You know, something when he said tabaraka mean 
So Allah made it blessed. Al-Asr is the gem of Asr, which is a zaman, a certain time, right? Al-Asr, the ages, I guess you could say. Adbun, meaning hulwun, sweet. Aqsu milhin, the opposite, aqs of milh, salty. Wa huwa ma'ul bahr, that's, you know, the, the water of the ocean is milh, milh. And the water, fresh water is adb, sweet, non-salty water. Khatiri, yani dhihni, my mind, khayali, my imagination, nafsi, myself. Rab, here, huna, ma'anaha, sayyid. Right, so Sayyid is like the, the leader or the you know the authority, the highest person, or the uh, owner, like a abd in his Sayyid, right, a slave, in his master. So, like if you say Rabbul Bait, the Lord of this house, we usually use Rabb in the religious meaning, right, meaning like uh, Lord in the religious sense. But if you use it. With uh, as a mudaf and a mudaf ilay, it can mean the sayyid of a place. Rabb al bayt, sayyid al bayt, the one who's the leader of the house, the head of the household. So here, when he said Rabb al shu'ara, I think he said, then he it was the or Rabb al shairi, the lord, the master, the sayyid of the poet. An shuduha, abhathu anha. So an shuduha, abhathu anha means to I look for it. In Aya at Aba. Or yeah, Aya to make something weak, to tire something out. At Aba yut Aibu. Aya yu'i. Okay, now after getting a little bit of explanation, let's read the poem again one more time, going through and understanding it. إِنِّي مَرَرْتُ عَلَى رِيَاضِ الْحَالِيَةِ Right, so إِنِّي مَرَرْتُ from مَرَّ يَمُرُّ To pass by, I pass by الرياض, the gardens, الحالية The beautiful gardens full of trees and flowers وَسَمِعْتُ أَنْغَامَ الطُّيُورِ الشَّادِيَةِ وَسَمِعْتُ, I heard, أَنْغَام The melodies of الطُّيُور of the birds الشَّادِيَةِ The singing birds فَتَرِبْتُ So I became happy لَكِنْ لَمْ يُحِبَّ فُؤَادِيَ But my heart did not love. Or my chest, yeah, my heart did not love. كَتُيُورِ أَرْدِ Like it's love for the birds of my land. أَوْ زُهُورِ بِلَادِ Or the flowers of my land. وَشَرِبْتُ مَا أَنِّيلِ شَيْخِ الْأَنْهُرِ And I drank the water of the Nile, the Shaykh. Of the rivers, of all rivers, al anhur, right, the plural of nahan. فكأنني, so it's as if I قد ذقت ما الكوثري, had drank or had tasted the water of al kothar, al kothar, this this river in paradise. نهر تبارك من قديم الأعصري, a river blessed from the oldest of times. قديم الأعصر, right, the plural of asr. عذب, sweet. وَلَكِنْ لَا كَمَاءِ بِلَادِي But not like the water of my land. وَرَسَمْتُ يَوْمٍ صُورَةً فِي خَاطِرِي And I drew. رَسَمَ يَرْسَمُ To draw something. I drew يَوْمٍ one day صُورَةً A picture فِي خَاطِرِي In my mind. لِلْحُسْنِ Of beauty. إِنَّ الْحُسْنَ رَبُّ الشَّاعِرِ Indeed, beauty is the master of the poet. وَذَهَبْتُ أَنْ شُدُهَا and so I left, I went ذهب يذهب أنشدها right? نشر ينشد to look for something أنشدها looking for it فأعيا خاطري and so it exhausted my mind حتى نظرت إلى بنات بلادي until I looked to the women of my land in terms of grammar in this chapter they're going to talk about the إضافة or the mudaf and the mudaf ilayhi. And we should be somewhat familiar with this, but let's just look over it even for review. They say, اقرأ هذه الجملة ولاحظ التراكيب التي بين القوسين. Read the following sentences or these sentences and notice the uh, التراكيب, the phrases or the way the words are put together that are between the 
parentheses القوسين بين القوسين between the parentheses سمعت أنغان الرياضي the melodies of the gardens really or in the poem right it was أنغام الطيور I think that's what it should be here so that's a mudaf and a mudaf ilay شربت ما النيل the water of the Nile right mudaf and then mudaf ilay Shaykh al Anhuri, the Shaykh of the rivers. Mudaf, Mudaf ilay. Dhuktu ma al Kawthari, the water of al Kawthar. Mudaf, Mudaf ilay. Tabaraka min qadim al Asuri, the old of times, or the old of ages. Mudaf and Mudaf ilay. In al Husna, Rabbu Shairi, the master of the poet, right? The Mudaf. And a mudaf ilay. At Tarakibulati Bain al Kawsaini, Kulun Minha Mukawanun Min Kalimatain. They said the uh, phrases between the parentheses, all of them are made up of two words. Wal Kalimatu Thaniatu Mutamimatun Lil Ula Wa Majrura. And the second word in each case is completing the meaning of the first, and it is Majrur. هذا التركيب يسمى التركيب الإضافي. This way of putting words together is called التركيب الإضافي. الكلمة الأولى تسمى المضاف. Right, the first word in this construction is called the مضاف. والثانية المضاف إليه. And the second is called the مضاف إليه. التركيب الإضافي هو كل اسمين أضيف أولهما إلى ثانيهما ليفيد معنى واحدا. So the, the إضافة construction is every two words that the first is added to the second so that the two of them together give you one complete meaning. وَيَتَكَوَّنُ مِنْ And it's made up of مُضَاف and مُضَاف إِلَيْ Like مَا النيل. The first is the مُضَاف, the second is the مُضَاف إِلَيْ Water of the Nile وَالْمُضَافُ إِلَيْهِ دَائِمًا مَجْرُورٌ The مُضَاف إِلَيْ is always مَجْرُورٌ إِذَا كَانَ الْمُضَافُ مُثَنَّ أَوْ جَمْعَ مُذَكِّرٍ سَالِمًا حُذِفَتْ منه النون عند الإضافة مثل والداء طفل مدرس الفصل So this is important to know If your mudaf The first part in this construction Is muthanna In the dual case Has ani at the end Or if it's a jam مذكر salam If it's a sound Masculine plural then right having una at the end in both of these cases if your mudaf is ani or una at the end we'll get rid of that noon before we connect it to the word that comes after right so this originally was walidan walidan the two parents and then tifl a tifl the child so when we want to put them together to say the two parents of the child, we have to get rid of that noon at the end, so it just becomes walida al tifl, walida tifl, the two parents of the child. So that was an example of when we have muthanna. Now an example when you have a jam mudakkar as salam, or a jam mudakkar salam, a sound masculine plural like mudarrisuna. So originally here we had Mudarrisuna and then Al Fasl. The class. If we want to add the two together and make a mudaf and a mudaf ilay, we have to get rid of this noon. So we get Mudarrisu Al Fasl. Mudarrisu Al Fasl. Like we have here. Um, also, they don't mention here, but your mudaf, if it's a mufrad, then you have to get rid of the tenween, right? So you have something like 
Kitabun and you want and you have Zaid and you want to say or originally it'll be Zaidun Kitabun and Zaidun now you want to make a mudaf and a mudaf ilay say the book of Zaid you have to like you had to get rid of the noon in Walidani and in Mudarrisuna now you have to get rid of the tanween in Kitabun and it just becomes Kitabu and then we always said the mudaf ilayhi has to be majrur so you'll make Zaid majrur you get Kitabu Zaidin the book of Zaid another thing if your mudaf ilayhi is ma'rifa is definite then the whole idafa construction will be ma'rifa like so Zaid is a proper name it's a particular person it's ma'rifa it's definite so kitabu zaidin would translate as the book of Zaid the whole thing becomes definite but if instead of Zaid we were going to use a word that's indefinite like rajulun so we said kitabu rajulin now our mudaf ilayhi is indefinite so we would translate it as a book of a man because now the whole thing becomes indefinite also here they're going to talk about the huruf of jar those harfs that make the word after them majrur so here in these sentences tatahaddathu al-qasidatu an fikratin insaniyatin ammatin so an is a harf jar that makes whatever comes after it majrur so that's why you have fikratin Ya hubbul insani li watanihi. So li for is a half jar that makes the word watan majrur. Tuyur al watani a habbu ila al insani min. Min is a half jar, so it makes the word after it majrur. Min tuyuri. Al husnu wal jamalu fi. Fi is a half jar and makes the word after it majrur. So fil watani. إِنِّي مَرَرْتُ عَلَى عَلَى is a harf jar. It makes the word after it مَجْهُرُور عَلَى الرِّيَاضِ فِي هَذِهِ الْجُمْلَةِ تُلَاحِظُ Or it should probably be فِي هَذِهِ الْجُمَلِ In these sentences تُلَاحِظُ You'll notice أَنَّ الْإِسْمَ الَّذِي بَعْدَ الْحُرُوفِ عَنْ وَاللَّامْ وَإِلَى وَمِنْ وَفِي وَعَلَى The noun that comes after these huruf مَجْهُرُور is always in the case of jar. Ala akhirihi kesra. At the end of it, there's a kesra. Hadihi al huruf tusamma huruf al jar. These are called the huruf of jar. Wal ismu al ladhi yaqa'u ba'daha yusamma al majrur. The noun that comes after it, we will call it al majrur. So we get al jar wal majrur. Huruf jar wal majrur. Huruf al jar min. So the harfs that make a word after it, majrur, are min, from, an, which can have several different meanings depending on the fa'al that it's attached to or the word that it's attached to. Ala, upon, fi, in, lam, li, indicating possession, for, like, hadha kitab, or hadha al-kitab, li, this book is mine, it's from me, or, هذا الكتاب لزيد. This book is for Zaid. الكاف. كاف is for تشبيه. To say something is like something else. كأنني. As if I am. Or you can say زيد. كأسد. زيد is like a lion. الباء. Has the باء has many different meanings. But usually meaning with. Right? Like بسم الله. In the name of Allah. Or with the name of Allah. An ila meaning to. Min ila. The habtu min huna ila hunak. I went from here to there. All these huruf tajurru ma ba'daha. They make what aft, what's after it majrur. Wa hunaka ba'du al asma'i takunu alama tu jarrihi al fathata mithil bulida fi lubnana. Rahala ila misr. Ila misra. So there's some nouns that the sign of their being majrur, of being in the state of jar, is a fatha. 
like Lubnan. He was born in Lubnana. You'll never say Lubnani. وَالرَّحَلَ إِلَى Misra. You can never say إِلَى Misri. هَذِهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ تُعْرَفُ بِأَنَّهَا مَمْنُوعَةٌ مِنَ الصَّرْ Right, this is what's called being مَمْنُوعٌ مِنَ الصَّرْ And there's many reasons that a word can be مَمْنُوعٌ مِنَ الصَّرْ If a word is مَمْنُوعٌ مِنَ الصَّرْ It means it never takes تَنْوِينٌ And it never takes كَسْرَ Right, so even when it's مَرْفُوعٌ It will have a single dhamma, not two dhammas Right, you never say مِسْرُونٌ or لُبْنَانٌ It's لُبْنَانُ or مِسْرُ it never takes tanween and it never takes kesra. So you can say, Hadihi uh, Lubnanu, this is Lebanon. Or you can say, Ra'aytu Lubnana, I saw Lebanon. Or Marartu bi Lubnana, I passed by Lebanon. So in the state, of Mansub and Majroor, both of them it has a fatha, and the same thing with Misr, or generally most names of countries will be like that. The rule actually is that any proper noun that's feminine will be Memnur Minasarf, and most names of places are feminine.